Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris Martinez. I am the host of Operation Agency Freedom. I will be interviewing today Christina Whitmer. She is the president of Whitmer Group, and they do lead generation throughout the buyer's journey in the tech space. And of course, for me, in my day job, I am the CEO and founder of Bloom, where we work with marketing agencies and provide management consulting and technology to increase profit, maximize your agency's value, you unlock your potential and achieve an eight figure exit. Christina, welcome to the show. Awesome. I'm excited to be here. So great Good to, to have meet you. you in uh, face to face now. Likewise, so. likewise. Well, I want to talk about this because in terms of your journey, like I think this is one of the most, I should say, there's probably a lot of interesting things, but in, on, on your website, one of yeah. the things that I found very, very interesting is your family moved around a lot when you were uh, you were younger and you spent mm -hmm. three years in high school. You actually lived in Mexico, which yes. is Mexico super, City. It, yep. That's amazing because I just, you know, like I moved, I lived in Mexico for five years. As I mentioned to you, I just moved back last summer and it was, it was a really, really good experience. Um, mm -hmm. Mexico is going through some very interesting times right now, but overall, yeah. like it was the first time I'd ever lived in another country. So why don't we mm -hmm. start there? Like, tell us about the three years that you spent down there for high school in Mexico City? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, coming, it was uh, my second year of high school that I moved there. And uh, I would say we got there. I just always remember getting there in the evening. And for me, I was like that. So just I don't know, a normal city, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, man, it was like going to like the most lit city and the most active. But Mexico City is just like quite a happening place. There's a lot yes. of, you know, buildings and traffic and things like that. So it was just like, oof, you know, but I had just the best experience meeting people um, that live there. My mm -hmm. school was an American school. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of great opportunities for me with I, which I don't think I would have had otherwise. And I don't know, I just, I mean, taking the trains and just things I right. really wouldn't have embraced had I not got out there. So right. I just, I love that spot. And then I graduated and moved to Texas. So no, I, I it was wonderful though. So. Um, do you remember the neighborhood that you lived in, in Mexico City? Um, Honestly, no. And I, you know, okay. I know you ask a lot of questions <laughs> like that. I was like, uh, I'm going to have the worst memory for you. But no, it was like, you know, quite a bit out there, like okay. it was more, you know, central, but it was, there was a children's home that my parents were connected to so i was up there a little bit but got it you know, got it so yeah i didn't know if it was in through. like roma or condesa like in that main central part because you know i've been to mexico city a, a few times and we always stayed in that like central place mm -hmm. but or, mm -hmm. or i say like it's not necessarily central because mexico city is so big but we yeah. always stayed kind of near chapultepec park but mexico is massive you know so like yeah. I, I don't know if you ever got a chance to go out to um oh my gosh what's the area where they have the boats yes um, we did that yeah what is the name of that it's gonna drive me nuts I, for some to... reason like chipotlepec it's in my name but i don't know that that's right but it was or zochimilko that's not right sochimilko but... sochimilko okay. that's what it is okay. sochimilko it. it was the best and anybody would come in town we would always take them there. so the much fun come up next to you and got corn they got music they got everything it was yeah great. really really cool yeah. wonderful and so like you driving out of mexico city you just you get to see how big it is right mm -hmm. and you, i remember driving and we were coming back into the city and there was like a, a ruins, which if I remember, the tour guide told us at one point that was an aqueduct. It was part of the aqueduct oh, system that okay. the Aztecs had built and then, and, you know, everything got filled in basically. Yeah. But it was, it's such yeah. a fantastic city. Yeah. You know, and just... so old, you're right. So many cool things. And we actually drove for visa reasons. We actually drove mm -hmm. from Mexico City to Dallas, which is a huge trek. We stayed in Monterey the night, which was cool too. And that was a neat place. So I don't know what was going on most of the time in, in a certain sort of global way, but it uh -huh. was just, for, you know, it was really, it was great. I loved it. So. Wow. And uh, did you, uh, did you end up learning Spanish or? Okay. Were you pretty yeah. fluent? I'm a little shy about it, but I really yeah. still am really good with reading and writing. But to me, it's really makes a lot of sense like every vowel is pronounced like mm -hmm. oh that makes sense so yeah, yeah. the phonetic alphabet seems mm -hmm. a lot easier and they you know yeah. there are some breaks from the rules but nothing like english you right. know <laughs> the one thing that throws yeah. me off with with mexican spanish is the slang so mm -hmm. my wife yeah. is Mexican and mm -hmm. if we're in Mexico and wherever I have doctor's appointments down there or like in a public setting where you're speaking much more formally, it's way easier for me to understand. Right. But when my wife gets together with her friends and they're just mm -hmm. talking about whatever, there is so much slang that I just get lost in it. 
you know, like yeah. I can't, I can't follow what's going on, but I don't know. Like, did you ever have any experiences with that, with like the Mexican slang? No. And then the speed picks up, right. Too, yes. right. The speed starts to pick up. You're like, whoa. <laughs> yes, totally. And then I'm lost. And then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and <laughs> eat my tacos. Well, that's, that's fascinating. So that was kind of, you know, part of childhood high school ish. So let's talk about mm-hmm. the journey since, you know, how you got to start the Whitmer group. Sure. Um, so for me, I, when I graduated, I went to UT Arlington um, here and then graduated, you mm-hmm. know, I, and even in school, I've always loved to, like, I think for technology, the biggest parts of it were if you're not afraid to break something like mm-hmm. it, back then, I think that was what showed like you could do things. Right. So we, you know, my cousin and I, we had a, a bulletin board system, like the old school dial mm-hmm. up stuff and um, and then getting into my first job was at an agency. Mm-hmm. And the best part was we were about to transition from print, like to, so much print to digital. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize it at the time, but I got to be at an agency while that shift was happening. So I got to see not only how do you help your clients understand it, but also how do you monetize it? Because mm-hmm. we were making money on print. The company was made, not me. I was yeah. making the worst money, but they were making money on ads, right? Yes. Percentages, commissions. Right. And as that starts to dwindle, they didn't really know how to shift to uh, retainers, mm-hmm. you know, just the, just the, the brain power, the strategy. Mm-hmm. So I think it really helped for me to see that. And I really took that to heart as I, started to go off onto my own entrepreneur journey. So, and I know you guys have been in business for 14 years now. Congratulations. That's yeah, massive. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it wasn't always smooth sailing though. You had a point <laughs> where, and maybe this was a precursor to the agency, but mm-hmm. there was a partnership that ended up not working out. Can you talk yes. a little bit about, you don't have to go into all the details, but mm-hmm. the, what was the initial business? Yeah. So the initial business was very similar. The only difference was that business started when social media was coming into mm-hmm. play, but for, for businesses, right? Gotcha. So social media was around and my space and the transition mm-hmm. and everything else, but businesses were like, ah, they were freaking out. So not only were they like, how do we use it? They were afraid not to use it. Okay. Um, they were afraid of Google reviews. They didn't, they wanted to. So it was really kind of fun mm-hmm. to be doing all these educational things and helping them. So that was, it was good timing. It was nice to be there. And also the agency I worked at, you know, they, you just, the bigger agencies, they get layers and they're slow and they're expensive and it was just becoming so painful. So it was fun to take that jump. And, and I, I left with a, a, a woman that I worked with and we worked well together. You know, I, I have a list of mistakes I made, you know, which were great for learning. Um, but, you know, one of them 50, 50, so many people said 50. And of right. course, you know, I didn't listen to anybody. Um, so that was the negative for sort of how it dissolved. It definitely affected that. I also didn't know the exit you know, from the beginning, you have to really know because people change, their financial right. needs change. So all that stuff, you really do need to know that the, from day one before you sign anything. Right. And then for us, I think because I was more of a service person, she was more of a salesperson. Mm-hmm. I think we needed that sort of financial mindset as a third or external party. And that could have probably kept us aligned because um, we had very different, I was pretty lean for my needs and she had like a kid and some different financial needs. So it was just really uneven and it just wasn't sustainable. Uh, not, not for us to be, and I didn't have the knowledge at the time to really have the conversations early enough to say, Hey, listen, we need to get this equal or it's not going to work in a year. It just started worse until when it was finally, you know, it ended so fast. I mean, it was, it's, it was really wild. Um, but I, I loved doing it and I loved, Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I left. I don't know, Mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have left on my own. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of things I'm grateful and my, you know, my life's a journey. So I get that part, you know, even though I was so angry. Right. (laughs) Did you, were you able to to salvage the personal relationship with the partners or did, this is why I advise people when they get into business with their friends to just think about it because you have to ask yourself if you're willing to not be friends with that person, if this thing doesn't work out, because that is a, there's a very, very strong chance that when the business goes south, the friendship's probably going to end as well. Yeah. You know, because, because there's so much that you haven't said 
leading mm-hmm. up to that point, right? And it's so hard at that point to really, you have to really want to work. It was worse than, yeah, I mean, it was worse than a, any divorce I had heard of, you know, it yeah. was, just, it was really ugly. And, and then plus we were in the same market, same space. So, mm-hmm. it, you know, for a short time, I would see that person be like, the awkward like awkward is ridiculous but and people are like oh, for friends yeah yeah what side are you on but well, um you know uh, yeah. eventually you learn from that experience though and then that then you started Whitmer right mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. how many how much time it lapsed between business one not working out and business two starting so like no time at all so really? because it, there was a lot of like financial inequity mm-hmm. I had to pivot and and, and I had, had I had made Whitmer Group a DBA like mm-hmm. even 10 years prior I think I had sort of always thought about what that would be or what it could mm-hmm. be so I had already sort of done that part of it um so I actually pivoted right away because to be quite honest I needed to we sort of split some clients up and some, you know, there was like issues and some weren't, we are, we're lost because nobody wants to be in that dramatic situation. So, mm-hmm. but I, I had to get clients right then who could pay me so that those accounts would be shuttered and, and, you know, connected to the old, I had to start new so I mm-hmm. could live. I mean, pay my rent, pay my yeah. electricity. Right. And I've always told people that was actually such an exciting time. It was much harder for me three or four years ago to sort of rebuild and reorganize. And then it was that moment to be like, okay, I need two more accounts. And, you know, so the, the level of hustle was, it was exciting and mm-hmm. I, I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. As you say that it was easier back then, I don't know if that was a hindsight moment or like in the <laughs> yes, moment. It's it was. Okay. Yeah, like no, in the I, moment, I you're had no like, clue. You're probably yeah. like, holy crap, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But yeah. yes. I yeah. think I enjoyed it. I could tell, mm-hmm. you know, in hindsight that I really did enjoy it because I didn't, you know, and I didn't, I didn't look for a day job, so to speak. Right. Like I didn't go to corporate or agency. It tells me a lot, even though I didn't think about it, is that I knew that I loved it and I mm-hmm. wanted to be my boss. I wanted mm-hmm. to have my company. I want to motivate my people. I want to work with people that, you know, fill me up, give me yeah. energy, you know, just yeah. all those things. I, Absolutely. I love it. So uh, it's actually a pretty good segue. So I know that you, you've you been in business for 14 years and the course of 14 years, the business is going to take on different iterations and there's going to be different focuses and, and things like that. What I had read is that, you know, now that you're in this, this current state of the agency, you're really focusing on working with people that you love and doing the types of work mm-hmm. that you love. Can you talk to us about that? And the reason I ask is because one, I really want agency owners to recognize that businesses will evolve and that you will also evolve and that's totally okay yes. don't try and force yourself into the mold of somebody else and two the the other big big important piece is that this business your agency is there in my opinion to serve you mm-hmm. and so by mm-hmm. by that i mean got to fit with your lifestyle and your yeah. dreams and your goals and right. so i would love for you to just kind of talk about how you've gotten to the gotten to the agency that you have today No. So, um, you know, we had the first sort of run and, and, and for a while I was the agency that would do whatever client needed. I sort Mm -hmm. of, that's what I picked up from the age, the old agency mindset was be everything to everyone and and get the money and and make sure you're marketing up and all that kind of stuff. But eventually I, 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 and I would say what happened is during COVID, what's interesting is that we were pretty remote Mm -hmm. anyway. We had Mm -hmm. a a local shared space that we'd go to and some people were out of market and remote, but we all loved remote. So Mm -hmm. um, that shift wasn't hard for us. But what happened was I actually had an uptick of business because clients were needed digital solutions when they had le- relied on more personal ones before. Mm-hmm. So COVID forced some things for us that we actually were able to, to take advantage of from a business mindset. So that was surprising, but interesting. Mm-hmm. But what happened is sort of after that sort of peak, um, I lost a little bit of this after that. And then I was kind of left with this, like that moment you just referenced, which is what's it like just really like blew it all up like what's mm-hmm. going on i also worked with a, someone who was helping me from a more of a mentoring capacity to figure mm-hmm. out some some direction but you know and i and i started to think and i am a bit of like visualize manifest sort of visualize mm-hmm. what that looks like not necessarily the details but you know what i want to talk to you know you talk to people every week clients mm-hmm. about work right mm-hmm. the good and the bad but i wanted to I wanted to enjoy those moments. Mm -hmm. So what a, you know, what a revolutionary concept. So, you know, I just started thinking about the things I want to make enough money to, 
you know, focus my time and give the best and actually want to do certain things. But then also if I have stuff to do for, you know, on Friday, then I'm going to do it. Like, I don't ever want to be, there's this brag that goes around where people are saying, oh my God, it worked. And I was like, I don't, that's not my goal. Right. Right. It's like, to me that I did that, but to me, it means you're doing something wrong, Mm -hmm. not focused or like, you know how much you can do in a solid focus hour. Right. Right. Without distract without slack without your phone so i don't know that that was part of what i wanted to to do um and start to visualize who we are and that's in processes i really upped the processes of how we onboard what our blueprint looks like Mm -hmm. when we work with clients and and started to walk the talk with myself so that when they see me on linkedin they they Mm -hmm. so there's all these little things that start to click for me and i've got tons more to do but i'm happy about the last two years no but that's amazing that you had that realization and there definitely is this pressure i don't know if it's kind of waning at the moment but there for Mm -hmm. a number of years maybe it came from gary vaynerchuk it was all about hustle right like you gotta hustle you gotta work and i will admit that there are times when you need to do that especially when you're starting out and you don't have clients and you don't have social proof and all these things my first few years was working from 6 a.m to 1 a.m pretty much every Mm -hmm. single day and i had to do that i was broke you know like i needed Mm -hmm. to to build this business but at, at some point just as the evolution of a business goes or especially an agency you gotta start figuring out how to focus on what it is that you do incredibly well and then build a team around you who can do the things that you're not very good at, right? And then Mm -hmm. building out systems and processes. I would love for you to talk, uh, spend a few minutes talking about some of the initial, if you can even remember, some of the initial (laughs) systems and processes that you built out that started to create this foundation where you could step out of the business interesting question and i we i want to also like i don't know if you do time blocking you just something you said earlier about yeah, like time buy back yeah. your time like that did help me too where i was like okay if i'm doing something even if i can just start to divvy out or mm-hmm. outsource or little things like like really chipping away that i think the better you can do that the better you know the better well that in and of it in and of itself is a great process of being mm-hmm. able to basically take inventory of your time yeah and then figure out like, oh, I don't need to be doing that. I don't need to be doing yeah. that. Well, even from a like quarterly, maybe more frequent, like take a list and put all the things you do in a week, right? Just write them down and then try to put them into groups. Like I have to do this. I could delegate this or I can automate this, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of chances to automate. Uh, we use HubSpot. So like even mm-hmm. the follow-ups in between calls, I can do that. So, you know, those are the three, you know, the items that I think for process. But early on, I mean- Honestly, I, at some point, this is more of a personal style, but Mm -hmm. having, talking to clients, like just really owning the fact that they don't know this stuff at all, Mm -hmm. like they're business owners, they're people, sometimes they do know, but the whole of it, you, you've got so much more perspective. You really have to talk that, that way with that confidence with them Yes, because we all want to trust the people we're working with, right? Right. And even if something isn't working, I'd rather trust that we're on a journey. And I believe marketing is a lot of trial and error, to be mm-hmm. honest. Like you just have to do a certain time frame so you can see the actual results. You could, man, we can pivot so fast now. We didn't right. used to be able to do that like 15 years ago. So it's kind of great. I, I think that's part of it is having that conversation. And then, so I have a sticker on my um, monitor. It's from the book, um, but it says 80% done by someone else is better than a hundred percent by me. Mm-hmm. And that's that concept of like, stop doing something because you know, you're better at it. Like you have to accept that someone has to do it and they have to right. learn and improve. And then you might learn something in the process. Like I might learn a different thing. So like, really that's my big one right now is trying to. That's great. I myself get really excited when I have a meeting with my team and I have an idea of what I think that we should do. And then we, <laughs> we, we run the meeting and they come up with ideas and I'm like, whoa, that's so much better than anything that I could have come up with. <laughs> not and then leading we, it ahead of time because I that's hard for me. It's not easy for me either, <laughs> right? Especially because this business is our baby, right? And we started mm-hmm. it from nothing like you. I started my agency on the backs of my, a failed business where I'd lost everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the things that us leaders have to get custom, get comfortable with eventually is empowering other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. it is uncomfortable. I don't think it's ever going to be super uncomfortable. There's always going right. to be an element 
where you're afraid. And, and what I explained to our clients is that part of your job as an owner mm -hmm. is to be a little bit paranoid. <laughs> right. We're, and, yeah. you know, like you're always worrying that something's going to break, like not in an unhealthy way, but that's part of what you have to do is you have to mm -hmm. look at the business and think what could break, what might not be working well. Right. And your team's job is to prove to you with facts and not feelings that everything is running well. And yeah. that's the importance yeah. of having data and mm -hmm. numbers. Right. So like, let's just say, you know, from a very, very easy explanation, we want to see that we are doing lead generation for our own agency and that we're finding the next clients. Okay, let's look at the marketing calendar. Let's see the web, uh, website traffic. Let's look at how many leads we've created, how many appointments we generated, how many people we have in our pipeline. Mm -hmm. That is a report a data report that shows if we're actually doing what we need to be doing. You know, like, mm -hmm. are we on track? Is our pipeline yeah. full so that we can hit our revenue targets moving forward? Yeah. Um, and I need to do a better sharing that, like be that second part of the conversation. That's definitely one of my goals to improve that, you mm -hmm. know, Hey, here's the result of this. And because it, it builds a lot of trust and it's just a good thing to do, but I do, I struggle with that still. Well, yeah, but that's okay. And I, I I really, really appreciate you saying that because there are agencies, agency owners that are listening to this right now. And they're mm -hmm. like, wow, like I wish I could be at Christina's level. Mm -hmm. And they're now recognizing that you also don't have it all together. There's things that you're, you're trying to learn, just like, mm -hmm. you know, there's things that I'm still improving on and, and trying to learn. At our peak, I think we had over 100 employees. Well, I know we had over wow. 100 employees, wow. different layers of management and all that stuff. And like you say, wow. And I look back and I'm like, wow, I made so many mistakes. <laughs> like there's so many things that I wish yeah. that I had known back then that I know now. So right. I think it's, you know, it's just accepting that there's this continual cycle of learning mm -hmm. and improving and stuff like that. Just being okay. I'm such a great job. Um, Thank you. I appreciate what are, that. What are some of the big things that you have on tap for Whitmer? Like what are some of the big projects that you're working on or the vision of the company moving forward? Yeah. So um, I think, you know, like I said, I'm always sort of testing some things and, you know, clients like to, you know, we're working with clients and, and we have, and who's just doing a lot more event based stuff than, you mm -hmm. know, in uh, user groups and webinars and things like that. So we're really upping our game. And mm -hmm. I always like to think about what I learned for myself and my business in that process. But then also, if I think of something I'm like, oh, I'm going to test that on myself. And so I can share the results, I can learn, I can, you know, so now I'm doing a, a LinkedIn live stream, which I've been testing for a few months with a, and I met um, networking, actually, mm -hmm. and she and I have been doing this, like, actionable tips for small business owners. So my goal is to sort of run that and see what it gets me right like because because for me sometimes with that kind of stuff it's hard to know exactly what I want from it mm -hmm. early on and maybe that's like the worst thing for a marketer to say but you know obviously visibility awareness but I want to look good I want to look smart mm -hmm. I want to look busy like happening you know I just want those things <laughs> and so um it's I haven't I don't know yet with numbers and metrics like what it's given me but I've mm -hmm. had people on sales calls say oh I saw that you did that or, mm -hmm. oh, you know, it looks like a lot, lot's going on. Like, okay, that's honestly, that's pretty good. I'll take it. Like that's, yeah. I want people to see it and see that that there's this like bubble of activity and, you know, appreciate it. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is HubSpot Partners. It's, I think, our third year. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on with the evolution of that platform and with AI, yeah, how it's, in, you know, integrating and how it's repurposing content. So I don't know yet what that's going to be, but that's going to be one is like looking at, you know, I'm trying to do short videos on how to use it from a free level because a mm -hmm. lot of people can use the tools and just ramp up. Yeah. It doesn't really help me from my HubSpot goals, but I think it's just makes the most sense for what I like to be for clients is, mm -hmm. you know, which is that resource of, of how do you grow? How do you evolve? And just real human sort of conversation with our clients. So that's, that's, that's really the gist of it right now. Yeah. So um, this is going to be my final question. Then we'll, we'll wrap up on this is I love that you talked about being human and also the evolutions that are happening with AI specifically inside mm -hmm. of HubSpot. This is kind of a, I don't know if it's a philosophical question or an ethical question because AI will get to a point where people 
humans won't be able to tell the difference between it and right. if it's a live person. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that are worried that AI could replace marketing agencies. I don't mm-hmm. believe that. I think there's still going to be a need for a marketing agency. I think that what a marketing agency does is going to change dramatically over the next five years. Agreed. But in, in your perspective, how do you think that let's just say from with the tools that we have today, how do you think that other agencies can maintain that humanness while also leveraging the technology? Yeah. So, you know, I think that AI is like the problem with AI is it's still really wrong sometimes, Mm -hmm. but it acts like it knows everything. (laughs) It's like having an intern who's like just really confident. And so you start to believe it, you stop checking the work and you're like, oh, and then it's like, something's way off. Like, that's where I feel like it is. So I do feel like it's a bit of a research assistant. It can go out and gather information. I love that it does that. And I I think for AI, the cool part is like, I don't use a lot of the graphic stuff of it because I know that's an element that has to me even longer way to go, but Mm -hmm. for gathering like, hey, what are, you know, the top marketing pain points out there? Because I just want to know, what might I need to talk about in my next uh, live stream or mm-hmm. blog? Like, mm-hmm. it just give me some ideas. Like, I need a soundboard. So I do feel like a single person starting a business has resources for free that they didn't have three yep. years ago. And it really, it can really just help you feel like you're having someone to bounce things off. And then you grow your team, but you can, you just put it into your process, like um, outline structure for blogs, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want it to write a blog for me. But let's talk about an outline that I can then sort of pick apart and and work through. So I I really like that stuff. And we have clients who are openly talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in some industries, it's like a dirty word. Nobody's saying it. But (laughs) most of our clients are talking about it in some capacity. Right. So it's not like it to me. It's like, let's talk about it and show how we can use it to be faster, smarter, better. Because the more it does certain things, the more you're going to get my strategic mind. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure they realize that that's the win. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I love that. And I'm definitely going to steal your intern analogy. That's such a good (laughs) analogy. (laughs) I've always been saying it's like having your own C-3PO or one day it will be like your own C-3PO. But I think today it is absolutely Mm -hmm. like that really, really enthusiastic intern that you just kind of let run. And then you're like, oh, crap, that was a mistake. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Chris, uh, Christina. Today, you've done an amazing job. What's the easiest way for somebody to get in contact with you if they wanted to, like, I don't know, ask you a question or just connect with you on social media? Pro- yeah, probably just LinkedIn is an easy way or Christina at WhitmerGroup.com. You can shoot me an email, but LinkedIn's good. I'm there. I'm messaging and connecting and love to follow people who have some content that I want to, you know, sort of input, give input on or and learn from. So. That's, Perfect. This is really good. I like to get into chat with you a bit. So awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on. We'll stay in touch. Everybody who listened, please reach out to Christina. Such a nice gal. And uh, we hope to see you on the next episode. Hey, thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you would subscribe to the podcast and also share it with friends, family, and basically anyone you know who will find the same value in this episode as you do. So To get the latest from me, then let's connect on social media on the Facebooks at facebook.com or Instagram. Then you can also find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, and even TikTok. Yes, I'm back. We are on TikTok. Finally, go to our website where you can see all of our other episodes of Operation Agency Freedom. Register for live trainings on how to run a highly profitable agency and you can see exactly how we help marketing agencies fix their operations and scale to eight figures and beyond. Thanks again for listening, and I will see you next time.